Thanks for tuning in to the Charles Novell School of Music podcast, The Best Day Yet. Here you'll find tips, insight, and information to help your music and your ministry succeed. Whether you're a singer, a musician, or a songwriter, we want to help you where you are, but we also want to help you get to where you want to go. We believe that our talents are God's gift to us, but what we do with those are our gift back to God. Yesterday's information is important, but what we can learn today will make this the best day yet. Hey everyone, welcome back to it. I, that scared me. So if that scared you, I'm sorry. Welcome back to another episode of the CNS podcast, the best day yet. Thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in today to see what it is that we are talking about. Man, I am um, full full disclosure here. I am tired, but I am on cloud nine, not six, seven, or eight, but nine. We are just getting back in from our first regional CNS regional session in Central Florida. If you've been listening to any of these podcasts over the last several weeks, you've heard us introing that um, as we lead in to the podcast each week. And uh, man, we absolutely had an amazing time at uh, Victory Baptist in Inverness, Florida with Pastor John Groves. If you are anywhere near Inverness, Florida, Ocala, um, Central Florida there, kind of Northern Central Florida. Uh, is that such a thing? Northern Central Florida. If you were anywhere near Inverness and you were looking for a church, man, you need to visit and then plan on planting roots at Victory Baptist there in Inverness. An amazing church, great people, lots and lots of talent in that church and an amazing pastor and absolutely a brother and a great, great one of my best friends. I love John Groves. His um, knowledge of God's word, but his heart to shepherd people, his heart to lead people, his heart to um, not only lead them, but to do it biblically, soundly, and out of a place of love like he approaches. He's just just an amazing individual, amazing individual. So if you're looking for a church in that area, you need to visit Victory Baptist in Inverness, Florida. So our regional, we had um, just an amazing time just uh, sh- sharing with, uh, s- s- we met a lot of new students at this. We had some of our CNS family that did attend as well. And it was just a great weekend of learning. We are um, working on some upcoming announcing some upcoming new regionals that we will have probably will have one prior to CNS 24 in July and uh, definitely mark your calendars. We don't have a date, but we do know we will return to Florida for a CNS Central Florida Regional in 25. So uh, plan on that as well. All right. So I am excited to talk to you today. Uh, we're, We're talking about our skills. And, you know, that's a word that we use quite often. And it's a word that gets um, misconstrued with talent. And we did a podcast and we are going to probably revisit the whole skill versus talent conversation because those two words kind of get lumped together at times. And they're actually two different things. A skill, basic by, by basic definition is a certain task or activity that you've mastered in pretty much every respect. You've uh, put the time in, you've practiced, you've studied, you've learned, and you pretty much have mastered every aspect of it. But it's still important to realize a, a skill involves far more than merely 
putting uh, theory into practice. It, 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 we're going to go over some things today that I think will help you not only in continuing to develop your current skill or skill sets, but also maybe in motivating you to learn a new skill. Um, you know, maybe it, maybe you're just a vocalist and it, you've thought about playing the piano or thought about playing the guitar. Here's the myth buster. It's not that you have to have the talent to play the piano or have to have the talent to play the guitar. Or we had a, a student at the regional that um, doesn't sing, doesn't play, feels led to develop the skill set of songwriting. And that's so exciting to me. It was it was just great meeting him, great uh, in our, our corporate sessions. But then I was able to meet with him privately and um, just see his heart. He, he wants to plug in. He wants to do something for the Lord. And he has decided and chosen to develop the skill of songwriting in his life. So once again, it's not a talent thing. We talked to kind of give you a def- definition of talent or of skill. I'm sorry. With talent, talent, I do believe is, is, can be a God given ability. I, I have taught for a long time and literally have taught thousands of students, uh, since I started teaching when I was 17 and I'm, yeah. So I've been teaching, I've been teaching 37 years. So I've taught thousands of students. Now, Literally on both hands out of all of those students, I probably could count to you the the students that I say were just totally gifted and talented in the area of music. And sometimes, like with this group of people, my job is to teach from the inside out. God has placed a talent inside of them, and it's my job, responsibility, and privilege to help pull that gift out and direct them and educate them and steer them in the direction of using that talent for the Lord. Listen, I can bring anybody into my private studio, my teaching studio, and help them develop a skill to play the piano, to play a guitar, to play a bass guitar, to be a songwriter. We can develop these skills. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, we're just going to go over some some tips and some suggestions that I think will help you develop your current skill set and then also uh, maybe motivate you to step out and to learn a new skill set. So let's talk about number one, what one good way to develop our skill set or to um, start into a new skill is we learn by doing we learn by doing. Listen, I I run a school of music. I, I'm the son of absolutely the best teacher I've ever known in my life. Education is huge. I'm all about studying. I'm all about uh, uh, putting theory into practice and application within our music. But listen, there is no, there's absolutely no substitute from learning by doing, you know, by nature, we're fully equipped as humans to absorb knowledge and information. If you think about it, we are reading, we are watching, we are learning uh, daily uh, and, and driving from Florida back to Georgia today. I caught myself. I literally was reading every billboard. Uh, and I think part of the reason we had talked in songwriting during the, the weekend that uh, about inspiration, that question, that topic on songwriting. Where do you get, in, how do songwriters get inspired? And I believe inspiration is all around us, but we miss it because why? We're not necessarily looking for it. So uh, I mentioned, and this has happened, I mentioned billboards. So I think I actually set the tone for my drive home today by mentioning that over the weekend. I caught myself literally reading every billboard. And there was several things that popped up that caused me to th- maybe start thinking about something a little deeper. So, you know, again, by nature, we're, we're equipped to absorb knowledge and information. We're kind of hungry for it. We're kind of like sponges. We want to bring it in uh, however much we can. But 
I've, I've gone over and over and over this in my head. I, I look back when I was actually in school, let's just say high school, man, all I wanted to do was climb on a bus and go out and play gospel music. I did not see any need for what they were forcing me to get up and go learn on a daily basis. Now, as I've gotten older and matured in life, obviously I see the skills that they were developing in me as a high school student have obviously paid off. But y'all, some of that math stuff, I'm still waiting to figure out how in the world. I, I Maybe it's just because I went into gospel music, I don't need advanced math because I don't, I ain't making that kind of money. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's where it's lacking. Maybe if I had a real job, um, I would need some of that harder uh, math. But there, it, listen, there is no substitute again for learning by doing something. Um, the more I've, I have definitely, definitely, definitely learned this as a teacher. The more that I teach, the more that I learn. And it, it's through, so I drove all day to get home from Florida. I got, got back in time. I literally got back about 310 and started teaching it at 330. And, um, why I, I, I had, I had 11, 11 students today. And as I give, and as I teach, I learn. So simply by doing uh, my job this today, this afternoon and evening as a teacher, I was learning through the material that I was going over with my students. So if you're currently, let's say, um, uh, playing, you're, you're a piano player. How do you learn by doing? You simply play the piano. It's not rocket science. If you do not practice, you're not doing. Practice is doing. Playing is doing. Performing is doing. I, I run into people all the time that um, they say, how do you handle the nerves of a live performance? And I ask them, well, how much are you performing live? Or oh, I don't. Well, yeah, it, you know, how do you get over that? You simply do it, you know, Nike, i um, afraid to say it, I might get a bill, but you know, what's their slogan? Just do it, just do it. So we learn by doing, if you want to de continue developing the skill set that you currently have, you got to do it. You want to pick up something and add something to it. I love when someone talks to me and says, you know what? I want to learn enough keyboard skills that I could accompany myself on a song or two if I decide to do that. You know, that starts to add variety to your program and to your, your set, your programming set. And people enjoy that. If you give them the same thing for 40 minutes, uh, to me, to me, you're going to lose me. I like variety. I like to do different things. Um, so number one, we learn by doing. Number two, imitate the experts and we're revisiting a word I just talked about. You imitate the experts and you have to practice. All right. Now, let's talk for a minute um, on the piano. So I'll, 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 I'll keep this personal. Who are some of the influences for me on the piano? Golly. Um, my da obvious, obviously, my dad, uh, Jeff Stice. You know, I've talked about that. I was able to, I first met Jeff when I was 12 and I was his student. He was my teacher during the music school that particular year, 1982. And so uh, Jeff was a, a big influence. My dad, again, was a big influence. Then as a kid, I remember with the Blackwood Brothers, Tommy Fairchild, absolutely one of the most talented individuals. I and I'm not only playing, but arranging and producing. And those are things that I do as well that um, required just as much effort put in, <clears throat> just as much work and practice as maybe playing the piano or the bass guitar or this or that. But keeping with the piano, um, those were some huge influences. A lady by the name of Carol Hill, she taught for us at the school. She helped me fall in love with chords. She literally let, my, let me see my music as a blank coloring book. And through the coloring of basic chords, how it would change the picture that I was painting within that coloring book. 
So she helped me. Jeannie Cameron was another one. Just what a gifted, uh, anointed singer and player. So those were some of mine growing up through this school. But outside of that, a um, gentleman by the name of David Foster has been a huge influence on my music. If uh, you're uh, a, a keyboardist and you don't know that name, um, study him, learn him, see what he's doing. So as I've gotten older, though, some I, I, the, the influences are kind of endless. But what have I done with just some of those names that I've mentioned to you? I have um, studied what they do. I've learned what they do. And then here's the thing. And this is where it, it, the, the practice side of things comes in. I've learned what they did, so I practiced that. But I also have practiced learning to apply it into my own music. So we, we look at the experts, we imitate the experts, and we practice what they do uh, vocally. You all, as far as like gospel music, Southern gospel music, um, Kim Hopper, Sonia Isaacs, Becky Isaacs, Susan Wisnett, um, holy cow, uh, Joyce and Judy Martin, Karen Peck, Kelly Nealon, Amber, Autumn. I mean, we could go on and on and on. Find, some, obviously, those are, are female voices. Find someone that um, you consider to be an expert and emulate them, study them, learn what they do inside and out. You know, on the mail end, good grief, David Phelps, Joseph Habendank, Scotty Emman, David Sutton, Eric Bennett. Uh, we could go on and on. Um, Pat Barker. What What a freak. <laughs> Hang on, let me clarify that. Uh, his, I love his, his voice. I love his vocal range. And then he's absolutely one of the funniest humans on the face of the planet. So um, you, you apply that freak there <laughs> however you need to. Speaking of freaks, Josh Singletary, holy cow. Um, if you do not have his new piano project um, grand, you need to get it and um, listen to that amazing piece of art that he has created. So, you know, insert whatever it is you do. Songwriters, Kenna Turner, Dave Clark, um, Joseph Habendank, Lee Black. Um, you know, oh my goodness, uh, go keep going, right? There's so many great writers that you can study, you can emulate and, imit emu and imitate uh, what they do and apply it into what it is that you do. Uh, number three, seek the help of a mentor. You need someone that can speak into your, uh, well, your life, your, your, your discipleship, your Christian walk, and your music and your ministry. And that may be the same person, that may be, may be multiple people. I, I know for me, um, man, I, within 17 months, I, I lost two, the two biggest mentors I've ever had in my life, and my dad and, and Jeff Stice. I've had to find new people to read. Who are some of those people in my life? Uh, Billy Blackwood. Y'all, um, Billy is someone that speaks into me personally, spiritually, musically, ministerially. He um, has checked me at times, 100% uh, done out of love. But you know what? Let's talk about that for a second. The older I get, the more I start to realize how someone wants to talk to me my interpretation of the, how they're talking to me 100% is dependent on how open that I am to receive. I, have, I know of conversations where someone has said, we, we had a student come to the school one time and, and they called in advance and said, look, I don't want it sugar-coated at the school. Uh, I am paying good money and I need you to tell me exactly what I need to know. And I'm like, okay. And so we got there the first day we took that approach. And then I, I was addressed in the hallway. What was that? I'm like, what was what? Oh, you're being, you're being really harsh. No, I'm just doing what you asked me to do. Look, don't ask someone to do something if you're not willing to be open to receive from that person. So Billy has been definitely a, a voice of, of reason. And, um, 
expertise. My, my dad always said it this way. Robbie asked the right person the right question to get the right answer. Billy Blackwood is one of those people in my life. James Rainey is another one. Uh, I recently have reached out to James. And I'm trying to trying to get James. If you're listening to this podcast, please call me uh, and schedule my lesson. I reach out to James. I need a lesson. I am learning an arrangement of my dad's and there is something in there that um, I'm stuck on. And it happens to be James Rainey's forte. Once again, ask the right person the right question to get the right answer. I can't figure it out. I am I am desperately leaning on a friend and the expertise within that friend of the great James Rainey. So seek the help of a mentor. Have a mentor in your life. Have someone that can can speak into you. You probably fast the way to learn new skills is to seek the help of that mentor. What what I'm asking James about is going to open a door for me in the area of creativity. Not that I'll never say James I need another lesson, but I'm the type of person when we when we when we learn by doing, when we learn by imitating, when we learn by seeking the help of mentors, what it what it what for me what is happening is if they show me how to do it the first time then i can figure it out the second time and the third time and the fourth time now when it becomes a new concept a new idea and i need help again i'll reach back out but i will watch i will listen i will be open to what it is they need to tell me and uh i'm going to not only apply it to that particular question that I'm asking, but I'm going to apply it to the rest of my music moving forward. Uh, the fourth thing I want to talk about in developing skills uh, currently or new skills. Stay curious. Stay curious. Curiosity is a fuel that sustains our ability to learn. Learning new skills depends entirely on a willingness to actively seek knowledge and put this into practice. Put it into practice. I am constantly studying and learning. A big topic of conversation during the Central Florida CNS Weekend Regional Session uh, was YouTube just kept coming up and up and up. Here's the thing. We, uh, when I say we, I'm talking to old people right now. So if you're not old, you can't relate to this. But us old people, we did not have the access to information like this younger generation has today. We didn't have YouTube. We didn't have Google. We didn't have the internet, right? So when when I had to do a book report for school, I had to go to the library, right? You did too. Don't act like you're all young. <laughs> you had to go. Now, we had, we had the... Uh, Britannical Encyclopedia of was that what it was called? Anyway, we had a set of encyclopedias in the hall closet that I think somebody showed up, knocked on our door, tried to sell it, and probably no, my dad he probably felt sorry for him and he bought that set of encyclopedias. And it, it was great. It was great to have an in-home resource like that. Think about it. It took up an entire shelf in our hall um, linen closet, as we called that particular closet. That set of en encyclopedias took up an entire shelf. There are thousands of sets of encyclopedias available in the palm of our hand when we pick up our phone these days. But back to YouTube. Listen, I have a, an account with a YouTube account for this reason. I am constantly, I, I probably will this evening, um, scroll uh, YouTube. And what I'm, what I'm looking for on YouTube is... Um, educational uh, videos for, for, for the purpose of my music. Uh, how, how can that look? Sometimes it's uh, new skill sets. Um, man, the last, the last year, I have really studied, learned, and developed uh, my guitar playing. It's just, it was something I wanted to do. Once again, as I teach, I learn. As I teach, I get hungry. As I teach, I get more curious about certain things. It could be an instrument. It could be a style of music. But our curiosity fuels us and drives us into 
to new seasons. Uh, I think we can get even spiritual about this right now. I think if we stay curious, even within our personal discipleship, if we keep digging and digging and digging, we learn more, we become more effective, and that helps the ministry side of our music. Man, you all, uh, so in Inverness on Sunday morning, I talked about connecting the dots and, you know, skills, developing skills, going after new skills. What what have we talked about? You learn by doing, you, you learn uh, by imitating, um, you learn by asking the right person, having a mentor, ask that right person, the right question, get a right answer. And then you learn by staying curious, you know, stay open and inquisitive about what it is that you're currently doing or maybe something that new skill wise that you want to develop in your life. Stay curious. YouTube, man, great resource. Great resource. Had this conversation with somebody recently. Man, listen, um, I can hold myself accountable because there are countless available resources for me to be better at what I do. There are countless resources for me musically, spiritually, relationally. It's up to me. Again, we talked. I have to stay open, stay curious, but stay open to receive what it is that God has intended for me. All right, so we've kind of talked about some things that we we can do um, and how to develop some new skills. Now, let's put that into action. Listen, you all, this stuff only works. If you listen to these podcasts, all all this stuff that we're trying to just offer tips and, and, and ideas on a weekly basis for your music and for your ministry, this stuff only works if you apply it. If you you have to put it into action, so uh, let's let's look at kind of I said that word action. Let's kind of look at put in an action plan to um, develop maybe a new skill set. Number one, set a goal. Set a goal. Setting goals are uh, is an important step when learning something new. It really doesn't matter if you want to learn how to drive a car, make a paper airplane, or become an IT whiz. It, it this we are a school of music, so we talk music. But listen, this information applies into your life. If you want to figure out how to make the world's coolest paper airplane and enter the paper airplane contest at your county fair this summer, listen, that is a new skill. But you can only do it by what? Doing it. That's how we started talking today. So number 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 one uh, within the action plan, setting a goal, we go back to, you know what? You simply have to do it. What exactly do you want to achieve? How high do you want to set the bar? You know, I've talked before in our house, uh, growing up in the Novell household, man, we've, I've, we've never reached the bar because when we get close to it, we, we just keep pushing it up. We, we're constantly wanting to learn new things. So setting goals. So currently, I've talked about this recently. I'm working on a new uh, piano arrangement uh, of my dad's. And um, my goal is to have this thing ready by CNS 24. That's my goal. Now, I, I, I feel like I'm a little faster on pace than I thought I might be. Uh, James, if you're listening, you can help me. <laughs> Stay on a faster path. Path. If you'll help me figure out this one spot that I can't figure out, help me, James. Please help me. Um, my goal is kind of way out in front. So I believe in setting goals. We can set long-term goals, but we can set short-term goals as well. So set, setting goals are important. If you want, to, why do you want to learn a new skill set? Are you doing some things this summer and you would like to incorporate something new in what you're doing? There you go. That's your goal. Number two, take bite size chunks. How do you eat elephant? One small bite at a time. That's how you eat elephant. When something seems monstrous in front of you, if you kind of ch- chunk this thing down and take these bite-sized chunks, I believe you're going to see that uh, you can achieve it a lot easier. You can do it a lot easier. Within setting out to do this arrangement of, of my dad's, that's exactly what I did. I'm like, okay, I can have this by this point, and I can do this by this point. And I have worked it in sections. I've literally uh, examined the puzzle pieces 
learn the puzzle pieces and and really I've I've got one more puzzle piece to 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 learn James if you're listening please help me <laughs> final puzzle piece James you're responsible you can help me please help me Obi-Wan you're my only hope help me Obi-Wan uh, but I've got all the puzzle pieces minus the one and, and so I am getting ready to enter the the stage of assembling the puzzle so little chunks one at a time uh number three take one step at a time one step at a time what you set out to do as a new skill you know hopefully if you've set a goal and um you know it's it's not to to learn to to play a mandolin um by valentine's day that's two days from now you know or wait tomorrow i better figure that one out real quick uh Set realistic goals back to setting goals. Set realistic goals, but baby step this thing. One of my favorite movies was What About Bob? Uh, Richard Dreyfuss, uh, Bill Murray. Uh, and there's that line in that movie, baby steps, baby steps. baby. I say that line over my life and my music and my ministry almost on a daily basis because uh, I, and I talk to my students this way, probably one of the biggest consistent things that I have to get on students about is they're trying to play something too fast, too soon. So I talk with them about the, the natural procedure when a baby starts moving, it's the first thing that it does is it crawls. After it masters crawling, then it learns to walk. And after it learns to walk about 32 seconds later, it's running across your family room floor. It, I'm sorry, the baby is running across the family room floor. So it's a natural procedure of things. We crawl, we walk, we run. That's exactly what you need to do as you set out to develop a new skill. Number four, I call this the shampoo uh, you simply lather, rinse, and repeat. You know, once you've completed kind of each step and you've started to grasp a new skill set, it's time to practice, practice, practice. It takes hundreds, if not thousands, of hours of blood, sweat, and tears to truly, truly, listen, y'all, to truly master a skill. Repetition, y'all, is truly the mother of learning. It's going over and over and over. I can't tell you the hundreds of times that I have practiced a specific arpeggio or a cadenza or a lick that I do uh, in a three-minute song. I have spent thousands of hours on one 10-second portion of that three-minute song. That is what is required. You know, uh, Michael Jordan, don't talk to us about any other basketball goat in the history of goatness, uh, in the history of basketball. Don't tell us anybody was better than Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan is the goat, the best basketball player ever, one of the greatest athletes of all time. He wasn't a star during his high school years. In fact, I believe junior high, he was, he, he, he was cut. He didn't even make the basketball team. Hours and hours, strength training, him practicing shots from every angle, uh, plus a fair degree of natural talent and, and athletic ability. Let's get off the skill and back onto talent. Yep, that's a guy born with a God-given ability. But uh, practice, effort, went into creating, you know, the world phenomenon that, that he ultimately became. He, he, um, he was curious. What, what, what could it look like to master the game of basketball? He was curious. He achieved that. Man, I could go down the list with uh, back to influences and, and people that, that have made a difference in my life. I could go down the list of... Um, what I've wondered if I could, if I could accomplish or master what they can do in this specific, say, lane, what could Rob do? What could Rob do? So it comes back down, though, to practice and effort and putting, putting the time in. Okay. So listen, you can develop anything you want to do. If you want to learn to play the guitar, you can develop the guitar. You can develop that skill. If you want to become a songwriter, you can pick up 
that skill. If you look into some of these tips and some of these suggestions that we've talked about today, you're going to find out what this is going to make it your best day yet. Y'all be blessed. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Charles Novell School of Music podcast, The Best Day Yet. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter under the name The Charles Novell School of Music. And for more information on CNS and our upcoming events, like our online school, our weekend regional sessions, our creative coaching, and our pastor's retreat, you can visit us at our website at www. .cnsmusic.com As you've listened to this episode, we hope that you've gained some information that you can apply to your music and to your ministry to make today the best day yet.